everybody, this is Buddy. Well, I'm in Florida. I'm at Tarpon Springs, Florida, Mary Lou Hulis, New Beginnings. I'm going to have a, a featured collaboration with her. And so I'm here with her, and we're going to do some interviews. But I want to show you her place. And right now, I'm actually sitting under a copper pyramid. And it is beautiful. Let me show you from here. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? Mary Lou makes videos of her presentations, what she does, and she's got really beautiful topics. So the collaboration, I'm going to be showing some of her videos. So you'll stay tuned to the description of the video at the in the description box and at the end of the video you will be able to go to her channel and subscribe to her and you can get her latest videos Welcome to Mystic Portal Television. I'm Mary Lou Hulish, your host, and I'm spiritual leader of New Beginning Oneness Center in Tarpon Springs, Florida. And today we have an amazing guest. His name is Robert Potter, and he is a lover of truth and a UFO contactee. And Rob has a website and is very active in, in really sharing truth around the world today. So welcome, Rob. Thank you so much, Mary Lou. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. We are so glad to have you. And the first thing I want to ask you about, Rob, is the name of your site is The Promise Revealed. So what I want you to tell our viewers is what is the promise that you are really helping to reveal today? Well, there's several promises. Um, one, I guess we could say that was from God after the flood. And uh, when we had the rainbow, that kind of symbolized the rainbow promise of the promise not to destroy uh, the earth again because of mankind's iniquity. The promise was to heal the unbalances here on this planet that have come from that quarantine of planet earth. And that's a long uh, galactic historical process, uh, very convoluted, but basically we've been held in quarantine for some time. And the second promise was uh, sometime in the eighties in Dr. Fred Bell's living room, I've been having many, many, um, let's call them contact experiences with Dr. Fred Bell and myself, usually very late in the evenings. Um, I was taken out of my body on many, many occasions and shown many things. And those are very difficult to describe and to integrate into a, a regular physical life because no one can relate to them. It's an individual experience. And, uh, but I was shown many things. I asked questions and there was always information and, a lot of um, journeys throughout the galaxy to get, to gather me perspective on creation. And then they culminated um, at one point when um, I was physically uh, beamed out of the living room and uh, spent some time on a spaceship. I don't know. I have a very short memory of that. But when we came back down, it was five in the morning and Fred Bell was very excited. We were standing uh, in his living room and he clapped me on the back and he said, you're the master now. And I said, <laughs> uh, and I had remembered, I had this vision of being on board the spaceship and making a promise to do my best to share the information of love and light. And I couldn't remember. And it was like a Looney Tunes cartoon. It literally squeezed wow. down to this moment. And I said, I can't remember. And he says, that's the veil. And he says, that's done for your protection and you'll remember everything in the future. And there's... Um, it's a very uh, cat and mouse game with uh, hostile forces that um, will interfere with people's lives. And uh, if you get too far, if you're not protected, you can lose your life. Dr. Bell was extremely high in integrity of not revealing certain things. He didn't tell half, even a tenth of his experiences to the general public. And uh, it's a, um, it's a long story, but uh, for me, basically, uh, I made a promise to do my best. So for me, those are the promise and also the promise of the return 
of the light forces and the healing of this planet through uh, a process. And it looks really bad right now, but we're going to get through it. It's just a process. And the sooner people can wake up, the more information we can share and the more um, people will raise their vibrations and orient themselves to the divine, the sooner um, that'll take place. Well, don't you think that's really happening throughout the world right now? I mean, we, we here in Tarpon Springs, even this little town of Tarpon Springs, are seeing every day people come into our center that are really awakening and seeing a, a greater picture and seeing past the illusions of uh, the darkness that is really pre prevalent on our planet today. So don't you feel that that is really, and that we are being, have uh, help? Um, we certainly have help. I will say we're not alone. We never have been alone and we never yes. will be alone. Right. This planet has had more open contact with benevolent uh, space family and some not so benevolent space people um, or beings throughout the history of our planet than we've been in quarantine. That's a relatively new affair in the last 30,000 years. So, um, Yes, we're definitely um, receiving brotherly and sisterly help. This planet is in a, a world of, on the physical surface plane, we're in a world of hurt and ignorance, superstition, and we're um, run by fear. The negative forces are very organized, and they have uh, a very advanced technologies, but there's nothing that can stay the course of an enlightened soul in their divine contact to their own God presence. And the more that people become aware of that and actually learn the laws of the universe and begin to make contact with their soul presence, which is beyond the limitations of the material world, uh, the more uh, the truth that they can, can shine their little light out into the world. So I'll say there's a lot of people coming up now. The Internet's been very good, so there's a lot of information. So a lot of people can come up to speed on what's been going on, and there's a lot of disinfo, too, so there's a lot of confusion. I've been in this since I'm 58 years old. I've been having experiences since I was about 17. So I have a lot of, of uh, patience and a lot of experience through this in a long long history that allows me to have a broader perspective that gives me more understanding and I would say wisdom of the truth whereas a lot of people have the intellectual and they just don't know there's not enough experience there so um, there's a lot of simple questions um, and I'll say one of them is if they're here why don't they present themselves <laughs> well they have and they do uh, but you have to realize in the 50s Commander Valiant Thor from Venus on orders from the Ascended Master Jesus Christ came to the Earth. He was acting as the administrator of the Solar Council on Earth for thousands of years uh, at the request of Christ. But he actually uh, presented information to all the world's governments, including Eisenhower, and they rejected his offers of advanced communication, healing, advanced technologies, and many other beneficial um, sharings that would take place in the interplanetary cultural exchange. But the, the forces that were in control at that time had already made deals with some hostile ETs. Um, we'll call, I'll just call them demons, uh, iniquitous beings who are consciously working against the universal law and using humankind as a resource in a parasitic fashion, energetically resources, and um, they disrupt the spirit of truth, and they jam the frequencies of the lower personality vehicle, your body, your temple, and from gaining access to your divine self. And it's very difficult. You can do it. It's a very hard road to hoe. So... With that in mind, they told them, they said, listen, we don't want you in our airspace. We don't want you around here. Uh, we consider you hostile. If you show yourself up, we're going to attack you. We will take you out. Now, the Venetians and Valiant Thor, they can't do that. They're higher dimensional beings. They're well beyond the Pleiades. They're on people. They're beyond Planet X. They're beyond the physical Martians. 
they're a very highly developed race on Venus, and they're an advanced spiritual group, as are the people on Jupiter and on Saturn. So they can't literally stop them. So at this point in time, they took the message to the people of the uh, world, and this was, of course, George Adamski, Giant Rock, Daniel Fry, of course, one of my mentors, uh, Frank Stranges, who was in contact with Valley and Thor and sharing these messages. There's also uh, hidden teachings of the life of Christ and his message, and what it really meant uh, is being revealed through Dr. Frank and some Dead Sea Scrolls that they're hiding from the public. This will clear up a lot of things in the near future when these things come out. Mm-hmm. Well, do you believe that they're going to, uh, that our government is going to begin revealing, you know, our galactic neighbors, about our galactic neighbors? You know, no, all these TV no. shows now, you know, ancient aliens and all of these things that are really beginning to tell the general public what has been happening. These are being leaked out. And of course, you have ancient aliens. All of that stuff is pretty true. Um, so we have lots of evidence. There are giant skeletons being released now so there has been a, a cone of silence <laughs> right. more intense than get smart that has gone over the planet on this and um, now that certain elements of the let's call them the cabal secret silence group has been taken down uh, certain elements of uh, the secrecy network are coming out and there is disclosure Uh, taking place behind the scenes from certain elements in the military that have been involved in secret space programs and know the, know this answers and have been forced by orders and threats of death to keep this information secret. So small leaks come out and certain individuals have been murdered for revealing certain aspects of this thing. uh, Lots of them, free energy devices, people have been murdered right and left. We're running around on gasoline, and they're flying. To, they have bases on Mars, Moon, uh, satellites around Venus. They've been mining the asteroids. They're beyond the solar system in the United States government. They go to the Pleiades. There's advanced technologies in what we call the secret space program that started with the Nazis landing on the moon and creating a base back in the uh, for, late 40s. So uh, all of this stuff is going to have to be bought before the public in the mainstream, but the government will not do it because almost every single one of them um, can be indicted for criminal activities in Senate and, and the Congress quite a bit. They take an oath to, you know, um, uh, the uh, Zionist uh, Israeli policy that runs. it's so convoluted. And it's so much criminal activity that you want to turn away, but at at a certain point, it's like a train leg. And that's what everyone's coming to now is they're understanding the nature of this beast, this misdirection beast that controls all of the satellites. They control every television station. There are sensors in New York, Los Angeles, Rome, Tokyo, London, you name it. There are sensors that will push a button and they'll take you offline if you start to reveal this information. They um, have a very compartmentalized um, program where not everyone understands the, the whole picture. A lot of beings are involved in certain aspects of these criminal activities um, and not everyone has the, the full picture. So it's very difficult to get a full thing. We have Paul Hellyer, the, the former um, prime minister of Canada or defense minister coming out and saying, yes, there's ETs and there's that going on. And people you know, wonder why they don't come out and land because they would be taken down with advanced technology. And they are. There are battles in the sky uh, in the past. And the good guys at a certain level, a very high level um, of benevolent extraterrestrials, they're untouchable. They come and go at will. They don't need a spaceship to travel. Valiant Thor can dematerialize um, um, as he does. And uh, their message is one of hope and peace and to help reestablish balance and order and understanding ourselves 
as um, you know, spiritual beings, luminous beings. We're not just a physical body. Right. We, act, we have we have a, a nervous system. That nervous system. Well, let me take you back to electricity. You take a wire, and I can um, put a positive end and a negative end of a battery, and I'm going to induce magnetism at right angles and in a circle around the wire. Remember the old telephone cords? That's why they curl because. Uh, magnetism will eventually twist your wires. They get twisted after a long time. Wow. So if you disconnect the batteries and you have this copper wire and I rotate a magnet and you go back and forth as you rotate the north pole, the electricity goes this way as the south pole goes that way. So now you have alternating current. The first one is direct current and alternating current. In the body, we have uh, 12 cell salts that start in the brain, and this is an electrolytic action that creates electricity in the brain and creates consciousness. So we have three nervous systems. We have the autonomic, which is your lower minerals, that's magnesium, calcium, sodium. That runs your basic functions of your heart that you don't even think about. Then you have the sympathetic nervous system, and this is the reflexive nervous system that you interact with the world. So you have a subconscious and a conscious, and those are the reflective minerals like chromium and silver. And then you have um, what's called the uh, parasympathetic nervous system. And this is the bridge between the two. And this is uh, the super secret um, life force energy that runs through 72,000 major nadis as the Hindus and the um, Chinese know they they map these subtle currents of the body and these aren't just electrical but they're also electromagnetic so we have a uh, the parasympathetic nervous system and these are the minerals of rare earths europium beryllium monatomic gold things like that that connect the healing between your conscious and your subconscious so there's an, an aspect of humanity that must become aware of its esoteric anatomy and understanding how to connect to its divine source. And that is part of our physiological function. You talk about the most high. Well, the most high gland in the body, you have seven endocrine glands. These are four centers, the uh, electrical nervous centers that distribute uh, hormones into the bloodstream. That's where your feelings come from. So if you're feeling sexual energy, your sexual glands are going. If you're feeling fight or flight, that's your pancreas or your uh, adrenals. If you're feeling feelings of love, that's your thymus. If you're feeling communication or power, that's your thyroid. It's associated with blue, with sapphire. Um, and then you have the pituitary gland, which exists right about here and here. And that's the third eye. And um, above that, and a little farther back, is the pineal gland. And that's the crown chakra. Now, chakras means wheel, and these are force centers at etheric levels that uh, direct prana or life force into the physical body. So most of us are unaware of these glands and functions. The secret government is very much aware of how the body works and these energetic principles. In my youth, part of my training for my out-of-body experience was to become aware of my luminous body because you have various bodies and it's like a russian shell game a russian a russian uh, doll shells so i have a physical body that's the densest and lowest vibration right the physical, the physical plane is the vanguard of spirit then you have an astral body and it exists within your physical body this is your emotional or your feeling nature then you have what are called uh the mental body or the lower manas of your intellect and your physical reasoning process there's a higher mind which is your intuitional body and that's called um the buddhic body or the intuitional body above that is called the causal body and above that is called the atmic body where the soul resides and then there's a logoic body so we have seven spirits before the throne seven densities of body that are all within you but our consciousness is focalized and localized on the physical plane and this is due to our um programming into only uh, looking at things from a materialistic nature it's meditation 
and uh, prayer open up the intuition and the direct connection to your soul. Yeah. And this, this is something that uh, people have to do. The luminous body, if you look at it, um, it's like a heart. If anyone's seen a heart wave, a heart, um, that shape is kind of like, um, if you can imagine seven rainbows and they go in a swirl like a heart and they cross it seven times. There's actually 49 colors for all seven planes. And your aura is, if you look at it from the top, it looks like a donut looking down. Wow. It's called a torus or a toroid. Mm -hmm. And then if you look at it from the front, it's kind of like an egg, but it's, it, it looks like a butterfly. It's actually, you have a North Pole and a so South Pole. If you ever look at a light, sometimes you notice that the, the, the light goes out from the top. It goes from its anode to its cathode. Yeah. So, so this is a, a principle of light and a natural aspect of us as magnets. We're a, um, a living flame, a living word of God in flesh. And that comes through the DNA and other things like that. So understanding this and knowing how to, uh, one of my teachers was Babaji of the Self-Realization Fellowship. Um, he taught me how to do Kriya Yoga. And um, I won't go into the contact, but basically what he did was he sat down in the lotus position and he rolled his eyes back into his head. And I mean, way back, and he was in the what's called the full lotus, and um, he started doing deep breathing to show me that is how energy follows thought. And if we supercharge our body with prana or life force from oxygen and focus our energy into the pineal and pituitary gland, on a certain to a certain extent, our spiritual awareness comes from an exercise like just like a muscle in the brain is actually exercising the pineal and pituitary gland so if one would study autobiography of a yogi or be here now with uh, ram das there's a guy from uh india named or from laguna beach named bhagwan das who's a friend of mine who introduced ram das to his guru nichananda in those books and um one in that book, he talks about the breath of fire and how yeah. by breathing deep, you can actually excite and bring the life force into your pineal pituitary gland, and, and it releases complex neurohormonal structures that bring about a sense of peace mm -hmm. and a connection and open you up to your higher self and soul. So the luminous body is a very real uh, aspect of yourself. You have different points on your body. You have in the head reason. You have what's called the tonal and the nagual at the center of the breastbone. You have feeling at arm's length to your left is your death. Um, you have a dreaming body located on your spleen and you have uh, your will is below your navel. And this is actually a whole nother level of metaphysical understanding that um, requires a process of gaining personal power and having a a bona fide or a true spiritual master, and there's very few of them who are actually um, can reveal that to you. The, there's different lineages of light that have passed on the information, and that one's a lot more esoteric, the luminous body, than, than some of the other stuff. But it's all kind of melding in the science and religion and the spirituality is, is coming uh, into a merging point at this time. Right. One of the things that I've read that you that really resonates with me is you talk about the importance of absolute silence and that one pointedness and right consciousness. And I know for me, I silence has been such a tool. Can you kind of elaborate on that a little bit? Entering into the silence is uh, what we call meditation or meditare, and uh, that's what ba Yogananda taught me, was Kriya Yoga. That is the science of the still breath. And so by um, placing yourself in a position of meditation in absolute stillness, if you read autobiography of a yogi, it's absolute stillness. Um, Yogananda's brother um, created a, a form of yoga uh, that a guy named Bikram Chandri has. 
and it's a series of exercises. And what you do is you go into your yoga positions and you hold absolute stillness and with your breath and you pretend like it's not stressing you. And you, you want to deep breathe, you're going through emotional, mental things, but you keep pushing yourself further and further into these positions. And what these do, these are the tourniquet effect that help cleanse the blood and the tissues in the body to allow you to enter into stillness. Let's look at the Buddha. We got the fourfold path, the, the four noble truths. The first noble truth is life is suffering. Um, um, the second noble truth is desire is the cause of suffering. And the third noble truth is that there's a way out of suffering. And the fourth noble truth is the eightfold path to getting out of uh, uh, suffering. And um, removing desires. Now, of these, you have all of the various religions and um, uh, spiritual teachings, even the Christian mystics, they all talk about sound. Yeah. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. There is something called the Shabda, or the inner sound vibration of the God consciousness. And one of the great teachers from the Venus, his name was Guru Nanak, about 500 years ago, started the Singh uh, spiritual group. The guys that go around with the turbans and the yeah. swords and stuff. But his teaching was uh, to connect to the inner Shabda or the inner sound current. And by closing your eyes, remaining in absolute stillness, focusing your eyes into your third eye, you can listen the various sound currents and this is probably more adequately explained in the science of Ekinkar which um, uh, comes from Venus and there's a lineage and if people want to look that up it's E-C-K-A-N-K-A-R and I know one of the primary teachers of that her name was Omnek Omnek and she's from Venus she came to my conference that's a whole other story but um, the inner sound current is something that if we listen to and tune into, we can have our own contact with the soul planes. So we have different techniques, mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama. What we're doing there is we're thinking about God and we're focusing on a series of words because it's hard for the mind to enter into silence. Right. Same thing with a, with a Christian, Hail Mary, uh, full of grace, that sort of thing. You're thinking of a spiritual wow. thing. You're focusing on God, and you're tuning into words because most of us, our minds will wander. When you achieve a level of focus, if you look at Vipassana meditation, to focus on this point, which is the governing, and the, set, the governing um, or the conception vessel of the... Um, um, the life force fields as they run through the body. I don't want to get too esoteric in all the different acupuncture meridians, but by focusing your attention here and focusing on the breath, breath translates as spirit. Yeah. So here's something that I tell people, meditare comes from the Latin, meditate. It means to measure, tear, wait, wait in the middle. You wait in the middle. Medi is the middle. So you wait in the middle of the breath, in the crooks between the, the, the material and the spiritual planes in your breath. You offer the in-breath to the out-breath, and you cycle the, the, the life force from the top as you breathe in all the way down to the center of the earth, and as you exhale all the way out to the top. And the idea is to balance your breath with equal in and out-breaths. And you can actually have a pause between breaths to more advanced. Uh, that's another one of the Buddhist passes, the Eightfold Path of Yoga, Pranayama, Laya Yoga, Hatha Yoga, Kriya Yoga, many different Agni Yoga. And, of course, there is the superluminal light transmission that takes place from a bona fide spiritual adept called the uh, Nada Shringa Yoga. And this is a, a process where a being who is enlightened actually can sit in front of a bunch of people and transmit um, a vibrational um, frequency that if you tune into, you will have an internal dialogue that will bring you to your own thing. The guru doesn't know exactly how you're, you know, what's happening to you. Some of them do. 
most of them are just sitting up there because that's what they've been trained to do. Mm-hmm. And there's very few. Um, Muktananda, uh, Sai Baba, um, and a few others. Fred Bell was one where I was able to um, get a transmission. And um, you can learn more from another being in absolute silence than you can from all your teachers. So that's a more subtle, personal um, uh, illumination that you can take place. Essentially, it's between you and the Creator, God. And if you have enough sincere, open desire, um, and you can listen to God in meditation. But there's another aspect, which is prayer. That's talking to God. And do it like a three-year-old child. Mm. Or someone who's in a a bombing mission who's talking to God. That's really sincere. Oh, dear God, please. You know, when bombs are falling around you there, they say there's no atheists in foxholes. So. Uh, usually in tremendous stress, uh, people will turn to God. Um, or if you have it naturally, you can um, simply communicate. And God's not a person or a thing. Anything that you can think about is part of your dualistic mind and is a material. So that's not God uh, because you're limiting it. God is unknowable, always was, is, and will be, but knows the beginning from the end. and um, you can have a personal relationship with that by expanding your virtues. There's a 12 faceted key to enter the Christ consciousness, and that's developing the virtues of loyalty, patience, honesty, perseverance, compassion, continence, equanimity, courage, humility, temperance, charity, and faith. Those represent the astrological sign as well. So there's this magical, magical order to the universe, and it has to do with sacred geometry, and that's some of the uh, Palladian uh, healing technology and stuff that we got. Um, You want me to show you some of that? Yes, I would love to see it. Okay, um, let's see. I'm going to, why don't I bring these over bit by bit here? Okay, we're we're into lasers. The Palladians told us that light is is information, and coherent light is information of a certain band frequency. This. Yes. What is that? This is a a series of pyramids and crystals design that they gave us. Called the Fire Star. I call it the All Spark. But I'm shooting lasers into the crystals. Wow. And this is like a spring energy. Um, I've seen. Uh, so you you utilize at night. It's very beautiful. And um, this hangs in your room. And it's, it's actually a tool, a feedback mechanism to your luminous light body. And so we have different stones in there that affect different things. Stones carry the Akashic records, the mineral kingdom, the history of the earth. So diamonds, that's why people value diamonds, emeralds, and rubies. It's because they've taken 30, 40 million years, and they contain a specific ray energy. There are seven rays. Now, all chakras have all colors in them, but they each focus on different frequency levels within the body. And just like the sun goes through a phase shift from uh, rises it red and sets it violet in the middle of the day, it's green. So our cells are tuned into sound, light, and color. This is a big aspect of the new healing. So I'm really into the sound, light, and color stuff. So we have... uh, I have a, a host of pyramid designs that um, I make seven and nine foot pyramids that you can use for meditation. This is the capstone. Wow. And I have um, poles that go together. So you can have a seven foot 
uh, pyramid. Um, in fact, I'll offer your your people who are watching if they want a pyramid over their bed, a seven foot or a nine foot base pyramid. Um, I'll I have a offer a discount of uh, uh, five hundred dollar shipping for the seven foot plus shipping, and I'll offer a seven hundred dollar special for the nine foot if they're interested. Here's another device, a more advanced device. This is called the holographic projector. Wow. And this is uh, from the Andromedans. Uh, this is a device Dr. Bell created. And so I, you shoot this laser beams in here. And what this does is this harmonizes the quantum field around you. And that's you have to go into the luminous body here, and that's understanding the secret and who we are. Um, I want to show you one other device. I'm going to uh, – I think I'll take the camera with me here. <clears throat> So this is, uh, um, I don't know if you can, can you see this? Yes, not, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's, yes. that's, that's, that's over the pyramid, um, the large pyramid over the bed. And then I have uh, different pyramids. I have a nickel and gold plated pyramid that goes over the head for meditation and aiding in, uh, in the body into the alpha state. And then we have a silver Nickel, gold, copper, and silver pyramid. You can't see the colors here, but that's a silver pyramid that has effect on the mental brain. And then we have a copper pyramid, which is for energy. Oh. So you come over here. This device, most people don't know it, but the government has a frequency that runs into your home through your electrical lines. Wow. And uh, so this device hangs from the wall, and the wire goes into the plug in a ground system so that you um, um, can take away all the government's uh, elf waves. They're called extremely low frequency, and they run off of the, uh, uh, the power plants, and it goes into every electrical home on the planet. It's part of the con what we call the control matrix or the grid. So the Palladians have given us devices to help us uh, help ourselves. So... Um, let me ask you a question. The first device that you talked about that you would hang in your bedroom, now what benefit would we get if we hang one of those in our bedroom? Well, it's an individual uh, process, but it acts like a spring. Like in the, in the winter time, because the planets wobble, the Christ energy goes beneath the earth. In the springtime, it comes up. In the summertime, it's above the earth. So... There's a lot of uh, energy. So what it does is it acts as you can either have it receiving, facing you, or you can project it going away. The Palladians use these to aid in their telepathic communications to each other over vast distances. Wow. And let me ask you, um, we have seen some devices that put light, you know, like pulse light, lasers that pulse light onto the pineal gland. Is that something that really helps? awaken and helps us raise our consciousness absolutely that is what i use it for is i take these crystals and these lasers and i have uh i sell crystals and and other things that you basically um you put on your third eye i have a laser in a stand that you can purchase on my site and you know those pin lasers that you use um that you put um you have to hold them you have to hold the pin. So uh, I had some design there, a little uh, harder to find, but basically they, um, um, you put them on a stand next to your nightstand. You put a crystal, a, lay, a crystal on your head or what's called a Sintamani stone or any type of stone that you want, and you put it on your third eye. You put, ideally, you know, this is part of the technologies that we have is you, you put a, you, ideally, you'd put a, a, a ruby here and a red laser. Up here, you'd put a white laser and a diamond. Here, you'd put a sapphire and a blue laser. On your thymus, you'd put an emerald and a green laser, and so on down with citron peridot. So you have all seven colors, and you get the frequency, the pure frequency. And everything on the physical plane manifests first in the luminous body. So... Um, you know, like I said, you can either create electricity through a, a battery or a magnet 
In the case of the human body, it's a magnet. The light body, the spirit essence, creates the electricity and generates that through the body that way. So it's a um, individual experience. And no, I'll guarantee you, you start working with a red laser and a crystal on your third eye. Don't do it in, on your on your third eye there. That's going to stimulate your pituitary gland. Wow. And your pituitary gland is likes to have certain minerals, HGH, it keys off, it's the master gland of the body. So if you just give it the laser, it doesn't work. You need to cleanse yourself, clear your colonic so you're absorbing the minerals because the minerals tell your electricity where to go. So you want to um, have proper nutrition that when this thing starts stimulating that everything's functioning and these minerals can go forward. So there's lots of things to health that are missing. You can just eat all the vitamins you want, but if you're not absorbing them and right. if you don't have an active uh, pineal, pituitary, thyroid, thymus, if all these glands aren't functioning, the minerals or the vitamins are being wasted to a right. certain extent. And that has to do with the DNA and that's another aspect of the health. But the Palladians uh, wanted to help us help ourselves by creating these resonant therapies that anyone can use. They're not necessarily, they're not going to cure major diseases. There's advanced models of these that do cure major diseases. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bell was working on one. They allowed him to release it, but he passed away beforehand. But uh, basically, it takes a picture of your DNA at its perfect condition and then projects that into your body so that you can literally go back in time to when you were 20 years old at your healthiest point in life and uh, regenerate. And that's over a period of time. And those technologies will come forward as, as things change. Well, when would that be? Can you tell me that? No. <laughs> I, want one, I want one of those. It, it's a long process. Yes. Um, like this device here I have. I really love this one. This is a... Uh, a watch, a laser watch. I call it the Promise Watch on my website. I noticed that on your hand, on your and wrist. It, and it purifies the blood. I wear it all the time. Wow. Um, and there's videos you can watch, but laser light. And I was with Fred Bell. We were the first ones to share this information as well as negative ions with the world back in the late 70s. I was very young, uh, and Fred was, I was 17 years old, and Fred was having me build laser systems on what are called breadboards, not solid state. And then we shipped them to MIT, uh, Stanford, uh, Germany, uh, and Japan. And um, they started doing studies. All the laser stuff, I think, start was started with Fred Bell. We, we pulsed alpha, beta, delta, and theta. And we found if you pulse of frequency into certain acupuncture points, you can increase white blood cell counts. The Everything happens. So, yeah, uh, lasers, and then the, the more advanced things are going to be have with ultrasonic combinations. Every gland has a frequency. So we're going to be able to stimulate through sound, light, and mineral frequency. The, the mineral contains the purest essence of that frequency. Uh, it's the highest consciousness of the mineral kingdom are these semi-precious and precious stones. And why do people value them? They're pyramid shaped. Uh, pyramids, uh, you know, pyramid is a keystone of modern mathematics. It's on the dollar bill. It's the only number that progresses to infinity is pi. So that represents unlimited abundance. Some people think it represents the cabal, but the pyramid actually can represents uh, God, the Trinity, uh, and the four elements. People think of the natives, remember the four directions, but they're really honoring carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen, which are the four base elements of the physical plane. Carbon is the earth element and is shaped like a, a, a diamond, a pyramid. Um, and then you have, um, um, you know, a hy a hydrogen is water, oxygen is air, and of course, nitrogen is the fire element. The pyramid is a principle of matter made flesh, a pyramid, fire in the middle. So this pyramid, when it's aligned to magnetic north, vibrates in rings, and there's a fire in the middle. And that other pyramid that I show you, you wear it on your head, like this. 
we have three different models. This relaxes you. And we took this to Thelma Moss in 1970s in UCLA, and people automatically go into alpha state by wearing wow. a pyramid. Your head is in, your pineal pituitary gland is in the pyramid, fire in the middle, the wow. king's chamber. So it establishes a resonance, a balance. And you have nothing but imbalances hitting you all the time. You've got the elf waves. You've got vaccinations. You've got chemtrails. You've got genetically altered foods. You've got fracking. You've got poison. We could talk about all the bad things that are actually consciously done to destroy our temples. So now we have tools to fight back. Do we need these on a pure planet? No. Pyramids are known throughout the galaxy and on different planets, depending on the specific gravity and the nature of the consciousness of the planet, it can have different numbers of sides, usually three or four, possibly more, and the angles would be different. But the Great Pyramid, 52 degrees approximately, um, is the most optimum for the human uh, body on the physical plane. So it divides the Earth's magnetism into seven levels in each level. And so um, it produces a life force that can preserve food, can alter water, you can water your plants, um, you can put it on your head using lasers or the violet flame energy. Uh, so many wonderful technologies that help you to tune into your luminous self, and then you can actually start with your concentration and meditation, feel these centers, and start to balance them. Because most of the time, we're just pushed out of, out of shape, mm -hmm. where all illness and emotional balances come when our frequencies are out of alignment and attunement. So we tune into our own God presence, the own the presence, the living word of God within ourselves. That's, that's the, um, the intent of these technologies to help you tune into yourself uh, through uh, following the natural order of the universe. And that comes through uh, sacred geometry and understanding the science of uh, resonance and vibration um, and frequencies. And um, these things will be brought forward to the public, advanced healing technologies that will uh, create miracle healings uh, in the not too distant future, we hope. Beautiful. Are, are, are many of these things for sale on your site, Rob? I do have some of these. This particular device, uh, I'm trying to find the right person to cast it. Um, I have, there's another device that Dr. Bell had a, a pendant that I will be, uh, it's kind of like one of these uh, without the, the double, uh, just one of these and you hang it around your neck and you can put different stones in it. And uh, it's quite a process to make them. They're very com complicated. There's 144 pyramids in a concentric Fibonacci spiral. Wow. There, it's like wow. a pine cone. And then on the back, you see what is called the Yanim Mantram, or a Cassegrain Wave Trap, is what NASA calls it. And so what this does is this harmonizes energy. I can, I can we used to do muscle testing. Right. And you could test someone's muscles. For instance, you put sugar over the pancreas, and a person will go weak because it affects the frequencies that go from the um, eighth, I think it's the eight thoracic vertebrae that feeds the pancreas into that muscle and it goes weak. So what we do So that's just the introduction of what we're going to be doing in, in this collaboration. So stay tuned for the videos. Thank you, thank, thank you. Thank you, buddy.